Check, check. Sound check, sound check. Let's just make sure that everything is coming through loud and clear. Just want to say that I had some runs to make earlier. My internet tapped out. And how is that? Lance, you didn't pay your bill. You know I donated to your channel and you didn't pay your bill? What are you doing? What are you, smoking something now? No, it's not that. You understand out here in Ghana, it's like buying gas. Not having gas, but buying gas. You buy gas, you fill your tank, you run it down, it runs out, you got to go fill it again. In America, we have so many unlimited plans with our internet. So we just pay for the month and we just download and upload and download like crazy. And I still download probably more than 10 people on this stream, <laughs> maybe 20. All the uploading and downloading to the podcast, the SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Oh, God. iHeartRadio. Come on, y'all. That's a lot of work, but I love it. And that's what I do. But sometimes you get so caught up in it and you forget to look at the dashboard and see how little gas you have left in the tank and you're left stand stranded on the road like I was last night. I was like, yo, I'm going to go do so much work tonight. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what happened. So I realized also that I was the victim of a scam. I'll talk about that later on with our sister Marta when um she comes on again. And thank you for the kind words for her last night on the traumatic experience that she had getting robbed and and <laughs> brutalized and manhandled and 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 uh, I just think the creator didn't go any further than that, you know. So that's what it is. We always have to keep our eyes open. But I want to get into this because we're going to have, thank you. Uh, thank you, sister. Thank you so much. The sound is clear. Yes. By the time that fills up, this will probably be over. It's not going to be a long one. Thank you for all the good words on the Dr. Umar Johnson show. Um, it wasn't about him, but it was about the uh, woman who, uh, I got a lot of good, good responses and I got a lot of low-key hate. You know how they do. It hit some nerves. But these are the people who can't even uh, explain why the sister there was next to a white man with a sign that said sold. Look at the symbolism there. There'll always be people who try to, you know, come at you because you have a different point of view and your point of view whip them like a whip. I said I was going to respond, but I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. It's going to just turn into us rolling around in the dirt. I said what I said, what I said, let it sting. If the truth hurts, oh, well. Same with me. If the truth hurts with me. Oh, well, I can't get mad. It is what it is. So anyway, we're going to talk about jealousy tonight. You know, there's a lot of this online. There's a lot of this in the world. It's always been around. Cain and Abel. <laughs> For those who sub subscribe to, you know, the stories in the Bible, you know, they wrote it. And that was one of the first. It wasn't the first, but it was one of the first uh, lessons that we learned how even brothers can be jealous of each other. And there's a lot of that. And I can go in on that, and I will to a certain point. We have Sister Miko coming on later on, right after this. I'm going to set it up. So it's going to be a nice, long, sweet night. So I want to speak about this. I had a few points that I jotted down. I'm going to read them off. But I just want to say, that is one thing that I just don't understand. Come on, Lance. Have you been jealous of anybody? My parents didn't wire me that way. My parents didn't wire me that way. They would not allow me to be jealous of anything or anyone. You know why? Because that was an insult to them. I was never jealous of anybody else's toys when I was a little boy. I was never jealous of anybody else's bicycle. I was never jealous of anybody's ability to write or speak. I was never jealous of anyone else's physique. I went out and busted my behind and got my own with a whole lot of trophies to prove it. See, my father taught me and my mother taught me that, that jealousy is the flip side of motivation. So if you're not motivated to do something in your own life, you got to understand that chances are these people who are not motivated to go after something in their life, they're jealous. They're little swamp pigs that sit around and watch you shine. And they're mad that you're shining with something unique. 
They want to tell you to stop shining or try to stop you from shining because they don't have anything else of their own. They got their own low, low self-esteem going on. They're sitting there, you know, movement. Like when you skim rocks, when you go to the lake, when you're a child, you could be a grown person. I love to skim, skim rocks now. If I see some smooth stones and I'm by a lake, I'm going to see how many, how many skips I can get out of it. Some get two, most get three. When you get four, you know you're really good. So these people, they, they're stewing in their juices. And, and, and usually these people have talents and abilities of their own, but they don't utilize it. So when you, when you push and throw out your talents and abilities and work hard on it and get those skips over the lake of, 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 of what can I say, inactivity, you're not worried about somebody else because you're enjoying skipping along with the momentum that you have and the push that was put into you, the speed that was put into you. You were cultivated for greatness, and you have to know this. Even in my lowest moments, I know I am a great person. I have talents, and I'm not going to be ashamed to say that. Oh, you can't say that. You're big-headed. You, no, that's the problem with us in the black community especially. We, we have things that we do, and we too damn... I don't know. It's like we're afraid to say what we are. If you say what you are, you need to back it up. If you can't back it up, shut up. But if you got something special that you do and you can do it, you know that you can do it. You go to the white man's job, you go and you show him your resume. And he asks you, what can you do? This is what you do. Yes, this is what I do. I have proof of what I do. Not yabba, 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 yabba. And nothing behind it. No. I got proof. It's, it's not in being inflated. It's not about, when you have a body of work and you can prove it, damn it, you the sugar honey iced tea and keep on doing it. And you don't have to be afraid about those who have the green eye, the green eyed monster. You see on the banner? I put the green eye. <laughs> Look up in the corner right there. The green eye. That green eye of jealousy. You see the girl sipping a drink? She's got a little smirk on her face, but she's not feeling whoever she's looking at. She's throwing that eye. And it could be any age. It doesn't have to be those who are just like kids don't understand. Kid, no, kids grow up to be grown-ups. And if that crap is not corrected in them, it's going to come up into their life. I have no time. I don't know what it's like for me when I see someone do something for themselves, they might be into fixing up old muscle cars. It inspires me. As a matter of fact, I know someone who likes to, you know, refurbish. It may be one that they have, or maybe they're going to work on another one, whatever, and they're really into it. I'm like, man, that's interesting. I need to go deeper in what it is that I do, not to compete with that person. No, but it inspires me to go more. My favorite word and term, surgical precision, deeper. And when you get into something deep like that, you ain't got no time to be jealous of nobody. Everybody motivates you. See, the thing with jealous people, once one situation or one person makes them jealous, it's a never-ending volley of feelings of, of this thing. And, and, it, and, it, and it arrests you. Just like the cops throw handcuffs on you, this thing arrests your spirit because you get so caught up with the venom. Constantly peeping at this person, peeping at this person, peeping at this person, or peeping at their house, and they peeping at their house. Are they inside the outside? I hear him lying. He must be doing, damn, he does so much. He needs to stop. And that's the one thing. What about the other stuff? I'm motivated. I thank my parents for that. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at your parents for not wiring you like me. My father wouldn't, wouldn't stand. There was no instance. And he, he told me before I even felt that thing. It's an insult to them. Not because they could or could not provide what I may have wanted that the next person had. Some of the other kids had more stuff than me. I always had a lot of stuff and loaned it out. I, I love my friends. Hey, take the toy home. Bring it back tomorrow. Play with it. Some of the jealous ones got more jealous. Who does he think he is giving me the toy to play with? I'm going to break it. So these people, I make sure to keep them away from me. See what I've learned to do with jealous people? I don't work along with them. I chase them away. 
I do something to piss them off that they don't want to come around me. I do something to piss them off that they see in the street and won't speak to you. Good. Keep your jealous ass over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. <laughs> Keep them over there. Jack Griffin. Wow. I mentioned something that, uh, <laughs> you know, Jack Griffin in the house. So I'm going to go down the list, a few things. But I love, like I say, I love you, Jack Griffin. Motivates me. A motivator, never jealous, always there with a helping hand or a good word or motivation. He's like me. He's not, he can't be that way. It's not in him. Not in him whatsoever. And those are the people I can rock with. Many of those who are here who I have not, not met, all of you in the chat room, we cool. I see that in you, that you're good people. But jealousy is a poison that would sink the Titanic 10 times over, right? So I'm going to read this off. Got it down some notes. Sorry to be so late with the show today. You know when you don't see me at the time that you see me, it's because something came up and I had to go out and I couldn't do it. And I could still do it outside, but it was my internet that just ran out. Man. That's like a crack hit with a crack pipe with no crack in it. I'm sorry if anybody here has gotten over that, but I just had to say that. <laughs> oh, here we go. Signs of jealousy. When you're jealous of someone, you might be fearful of losing your position or status to them. When you feel jealous of another person, what you might really be feeling is temporal anxiety or unease that the other person may have what could be yours. With a coworker, this could be concern over your position. With a significant other, it could be fear of losing your relationship. Though you may think of jealousy as occurring exclusively in romantic relationships, you can be jealous in many relationships in your life, including those with coworkers, classmates, friends, and family. Here's what to look for and work through. Signs of jealousy. Signs of jealousy can be tricky to identify, particularly if you're the one experiencing them. Here are some signs that you may be jealous of someone. You don't celebrate their success. If you've ever found yourself feeling annoyed that your sister got praised for doing a chore properly, feeling like others are complimenting your significant other too much, not sharing in a coworker's success, you may be jealous of them. You act passive aggressively toward them. Passive aggressive behavior is another anxiety or fear driven response. It occurs when you don't want to directly act out to express a negative emotion. For example, you become sullen or sulk when you, when you're around your romantic partner's friends, but perk up when they leave, you start to avoid them. If you're actively, if you active, you're actively avoiding someone, it could be a sign that you're jealous of them. You may find yourself skipping meetings with coworkers or get together with friends to avoid interacting with the person. You become overly critical of them. When you're jealous of someone, you may find yourself being critical of them. This can go along with not celebrating their success. I was envy different. The terms envy and jealousy are often used interchangeably, but there is a slight difference between them. Even some researchers have blended the meaning of the two words, which only adds to the confusion. Some researchers explain jealousy as a belief that you may lose a relationship with an important person in your life to a rival who may be real or imagined. They say that jealousy can affect your thoughts, behaviors, and emotions. By comparison, a 2020 study defines envy as status-related painful emotion. Status-related painful emotion. When you feel envy, you want what someone else has, whether it's a promotion or a loving relationship. What jealousy looks like in daily life. While your responses to your own feelings of jealousy can vary, the following are some examples of how jealousy could look in real-world situations. With family, as an adult, you may find yourself avoiding family functions when your sibling will be there because you may fear they will receive all the praise from your parents. 
in this case, talking about your fears with your family members or talking with a therapist or counselor may be helpful. If you're a parent, you may notice that, that your children are acting out more. You might also notice that your kid is throwing more tantrums, becoming more clingy, or experiencing more mood shifts. These are all signs that your child may be jealous of their siblings. You may want to consider setting aside dedicated time to spend with each child. This can help show each child that they are loved and are not in competition for your attention. With coworkers, if you're a veteran in your office, you may find yourself becoming jealous of a new coworker. You may find like they're coming for your job or like you will be replaced. This can lead you to withdraw from helping them, to find ways to put them down or not to acknowledge their successes. Here are some steps you can take to help prevent yourself from becoming too jealous of a coworker. Focus on yourself and your own achievements, as well as areas in which you can improve if needed. Find the cause of your jealousy and use the knowledge to help avoid negative thoughts. Practice self-affirmation, such as pointing out to yourself what you're good at. With friends, jealousy and friendships can look a little like it does in romantic relationships. You may feel possessive of your friend. You may want to spend time only with them and prevent them from spending time with others. Though it's important to make sure you don't become possessive, a little friendship jealousy may be helpful to your relationship. According to a 2001, 2021 study, jealousy may actually help you maintain a friendship and be pro-social. If you or your friend fears that jealousy is causing a problem, you can take steps such as identifying triggers and talking openly with each other about your feelings. With romantic partners, jealousy with a romantic partner can be a problematic situation. You may find that you can't trust them or you might become possessive of them in an attempt to not lose them to others. If you do find yourself getting emotional about ruminating on or acting on the idea of hypothetically losing your romantic partner to someone else, you can also, you can try taking these steps. Identifying triggers of your jealousy and think about whether you have any actual evidence that your partner has done anything wrong or cheated on you. Have an open and honest, honest conversation about your fears and desires with your partner. Avoid making accusations or confrontations about their actions. Let go of past arguments or wrongdoings and live each day as though it's a fresh start with them. Try to stop your imagination from getting away from you. Get involved in groups and activities that help promote relaxation. The recap. Jealousy happens when you fear you're going to lose a status with another person. It is similar to, but not the same as envy, which occurs when you want what other, another person has. You can be jealous of many types of people in your life, including friends, coworkers, family, and lovers. Your jealousy can show up as various behaviors, behaviors such as withdrawing from situations or bad-mouthing others. If you recognize jealousy in yourself, you can take steps to prevent it from taking over your relationships, practicing positive self-talk, looking at situations objectively, and trying to identify your triggers can all help. Yeah, not bad. But the thing, like I said, a lot of us are so embedded with these feelings of jealousy. And we know when we are. We know when we're jealous. We know we know that, but we try to push it off as something else. And remember, a lot of us have other situations going on, other dysfunctions that we're fighting that we don't know about. You know, a lot of us just a tangled ball of mess. And am I sitting here on a throne trying to act perfect and holier than thou? No, I've had a lot of things that I've had to get over, struggles I had to get over, but jealousy wasn't one of them. If I was motivated by someone, if I saw someone do something great, I would never try to mar their greatness, put it down or uh, uh, slander it. No, I congratulate them and thank them for the motivation to go deeper because see, I know for a fact that motivation just doesn't come from operating in the same lane that you operate in. Like I said, if I'm practicing to be a better baseball player, 
I might run into a ballerina that does her thing so bad that it motivates me to be a better baseball player. But a lot of us don't know that. That motivation is interchangeable. And once you're motivated for one thing, you can transfer that motivation off into something else. So instead of looking down inside yourself and feeling bad for what you're not doing, what is it that you can do? And stop having these feelings of jealousy by motivating yourself to move towards something. Movement helps it to feel better about yourself. But there are too many grown-ass people that I know and I, heard, I, I see who, and I keep them out of my, my inner circle. I cannot deal with it. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I will ghost you. I'll cut you off. You know, you're over there acting cool with me and then you backbite and trying to, uh-uh. No way, I don't do that. I can't, I can't. Look, I'm not 100 years old, but I'm not 20 years old anymore. I have no time to waste. And every day is precious. There's so many of us who are leaving out of this world and we don't know when our time is coming. So for me, it's not a race against what those cause called death because I do feel like nature is cyclical. Nature continues on. I'm not going to say I'm going to come back in the same body. Energy is energy. And one thing that we must know in this world, energy cannot be created or destroyed. So where does our energy go? We don't have the answers for all of that right now. We're all exploring. We're all trying to feel around for the switch in the dark. So while I'm here, there must be something that I need to do here. There must be something that I need to motivate here. And if I can motivate somebody to do something, that's all beautiful. Even if it's something that I don't, that I, that, that, that I don't do, right? But if you're going to get jealous, I'm going to rag you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not even going to try to make you feel good because you shouldn't be feeling that way. Get up, motivate, and have something to do. Just like the person who's motivated to come on my, my stream all the time on, on, on Facebook and try to, uh, uh, okay, I, I don't have no sound. Okay, let me see what's going on with this. Okay, I'm back. All right. It must have been a slight glitch because you said it and within a minute you came back. Boy, they used me to try to always, I'm going to get this guy too. Little sc scammers. I'm scamming. And I hope you like scamming too. Let me take a sip of this. Cucumber, ginger, uh, uh, what is the um, other thing I had yesterday? It's just something, man, this thing is so sweet. Hold on, yo, let me get a little sip. Mm. Straight up the backyard, y'all. And Mrs. Scurry said, oh, this is too much for me. I'm going to, I'm going to put mine in the refrigerator. And I'm like, listen, I could drink 40s. You're going to put yours in the refrigerator and go to bed and you're going to leave me down here with that sweet tasting thing and mine is done. Listen, I apologize ahead of time. I'm going to kill that thing. I'm going to straight rob you. I'm sorry. <laughs> this thing is too good. Let me get the rest of it. <laughs> and if I take hers during the stream and you see me getting beat up, don't call 911 because it's justified. I know the consequences of my actions. And I am going to do it. <laughs> you'll hear about it. If you don't see me for a week, you'll know I got beat upside the head. No, she ain't gonna do that. But anyway, it's it's I always say this. I always say this that we're dealt a hand out of the deck of life, like cards, right? And some people have what may look like a winning hand. And others may get a hand and they say, there's no way I can win this game. I believe that your attitude toward life, assessing what your capabilities are from within can help even when you have what looks like a losing hand. Why is it a losing hand? How do you know what moves that your opponent is going to make with a winning looking hand, right? No, I'll save some. I'm not going to mess it up that way. But tomorrow, we're gonna have, I'm going to have to make going a whole lot of that. For some reason, I'm just so thirsty tonight. Right? But yeah, it's how we play the game and use what we have. Too many of us relegate ourselves to a losing status. We already kill ourselves off with, with, with the negative talk. There's a lot of things that I have done in this life that if I spoke negatively in the very beginning... You know, then I wouldn't have done it. And I, and I have to I have to go back to January 
1980. <laughs> Jack Griffin, I'm going to bring up your name, man. If Jack Griffin discouraged me in January of 1980, 43 years ago, 43 and, and, and almost 44 years ago, I would have never gotten to bodybuilding the way I did because he could have smashed me. He encouraged me and he said, this is a start. You'll be better. You know, he didn't say, oh, you're, you're terrible looking. You don't look like, you know, no. And guess what? Two and a half years later, I'm winning national titles. You see what I mean? So you can have people around you that can smash you. You can have people around you who encourage you. And you got to give credit where credit is due. You see, and you have to have a winning team around you who sees the best in you, but also will tell you the truth. You see what I mean? Jack Griffin didn't lie to me. He said, brother, you go ahead. You have a lot of work to do, but go in. Let's see how you do and continue on. And we feel that you can do much better. And here he is at the show. Maybe he stepped away or something, but I thank you, brother. And so I took those successes with me throughout life. Even through my more decadent times, I was still a positive person. I was never negative and, oh, I can't do this and I can't do that. I may have been misdirected by self because of my carnal desires. There's a lot of pretty girls out there back then. I couldn't help myself. Jack Griffin in the house, yes. Much love to you. Everybody give Jack Griffin some props. That's a real brother right there. That's a real brother through my high times and even my low times, he never turned his back on me. And I love him very much. I always do that because we're here now and you need to hear it when we're both alive and all of us are alive. I might not be here, but I got the words out now because now you can hear it and give him his props. You see? So that's what it is. But these other people who find themselves in your inner circle for the sole purpose of destroying you these people are so deceptive that they will act as though they're happy for you. They will act as though they're part of the inner circle. And all the while, they're burning. They're burning on the inside, waiting to get close to you. See, I've had people around me, like different people, male and female. You know, females who are platonic, you know, and, and male friends that weren't. No, I can't say friends because... Jack Griffin is a friend and we have mutual friends that are friends. And um, other than that, you know, I have people that I know outside of that circle who I could say is a friend or two, but um, you have people who are close to that, but they're not really that when you look at it. Right. And some of these people will always be there for you when you're down and out. Now a friend should always be there for you when you're down and out. Yes. Keep raining blessings and love. And positive energy, because he's a positive brother on Jack Griffin. Anytime, even even if 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 this show is over and it's a it's a video and you hear it, throw him props. Much love to the brother, because he's my family. He's more than just a friend. You know, when you get past a certain age, you realize, hey, wait a second, <laughs> we've known each other for a long time. We're like, you know, but yeah, you people like I was mentioning just a little while ago, just a second ago, who who are not really in your corner and. You can sometimes, in your worst moments, whatever it may be, it may be where you lose someone, they transition. You don't really lose them, they transition. Um, you break up with somebody, you lose a job, you find an illness that you may have or whatever, and you didn't know that all along they weren't rooting for you. They were just waiting for the opportune, most opportune time to get next to you, to feed off of your fall. And your fall doesn't mean you did anything bad. It's just a challenge. So maybe I shouldn't have said a fall, but they're there for you. You're going through something with your wife or your girlfriend. I'm speaking as a man. So if you're a woman, that's your boyfriend or uh, uh, your husband. Sorry, LGBTQ. <laughs> I can't go down all them categories, right? Listen, it is what it is. I'm a hetero. This is what I say here, right? It, look, look, look. If I'm Jewish, I'm having a, a bar mitzvah. Don't get mad at me because I don't have soul food up in the bad boy. Don't be mad at me because I don't have Jamaican jerk chicken. This is a Jewish bar mitzvah. That's the same way if it's some kind of a Italian affair. 
Don't be mad if there's not Russian cuisine in there. Don't be mad if there's no Saskatchewan Chinese food. You know what I mean? This is me. Oh, you didn't include us. Look, if I included you and went down the list, we'd be here for the next three hours. Y'all are taking over the whole alphabet. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jack Griffin. Um, you know my ups, you know my downs. <laughs> you know the downs too, and you've always accepted me and loved me and, and never turned your back on me and and encouraged me. And I thank you for that, brother. Anytime. Anytime you come to the show, I'm gonna give you props. So if you don't want props, don't type nothing in the, in the chat room because I'm gonna give you props. Yes. Yes, Master Glam. That is ba oh uh and merengue. Merengue was what I had, cucumber, uh um, June plum leaf. Um, turmeric in there, little ginger, man, this thing is, mm. oh man, that's all I could think about. I'm looking out in the backyard right now and saying, oh man, I'm going to get back there. I don't care how many snakes are around, crawling around back there, <laughs> right? Head not and sons, welcome on in. Mm. But even that recipe sounds good. I'm, I'm pff, My kidneys are in for a flush. But like I said, I've known people who... When I was going through stuff in a prior relationship and it was getting down and dirty, my friend's friends were there. You know, Jack Griffin was there. He knew he's, he was, he's not one of the ones that I'm talking about. He's one of the good guys. And our other, our other friend, Julie, uh, 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 Jack Griffin, we will say Julian K American gigolo. He ain't no gigolo. We just call him that. Right. Those are my friends, you know, and, and they're my brothers. They know things about me that if you all found out, oh, my God, Lance, you are out there. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is that these are other people who the other people who weren't as close, but who are secretly feasting on my pain, secretly feasting on it. Now, see me, I'm a comedian. Right. And I know that when you laugh at a situation, you take back control of it. And it won't mess with you anymore. But it's not like tears of a clown when nobody's around. I seriously will make fun of a situation that's hurting me. That's one of the craziest any ways I deal with stuff. And if I do have to cry over something and actually shed tears, I will do it with no shame. In front of people, publicly, I don't care. I'm one of those people who I know we're all human. I know we all feel things. I know we all have vulnerable moments. When you have a vulnerable moment, it doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It doesn't mean that something that you're weak or less than because these secondary, I'll call them secondary entities, secondary associates, not your real inner core. Those secondary associates who pretend to be friends, they're the ones who are crossing their fingers and hoping like hell. Oh, they're going to go through it now because they were jealous of you. And the high points that you sustained, which were not just high points, but the high points was the standard of your life. So it wasn't just a peak for a night or two. You see what I mean? Like you've been rolling successful and you may not even seen it as that, as being, oh, successful. But they saw it that way because they were so focused on you with a jealous mind that they couldn't get their feet moving toward goals that they could have made, that they had the talents to achieve. Ain't that something? And when they discover these talents and abilities, they have to get themselves sometime like, why couldn't I have rewired myself if I wasn't even wired this way in life early on? So when you are going through stuff, and they're talking to you on the phone and you're crying to them or explaining the altercation or, or, or the confrontation and the nasty words said with that significant other. I'm using it as an example in a relationship that's breaking up or a marriage that's breaking up and it's back and forth, back and forth. Now, with your real friends, you're going to tell them stuff, too. Doesn't mean they're not real to you because those are the real people you can talk about. I'm talking about them secondary jealous associates that you think may be more friendly than you. It's a little delusion with you now. Oh, they're friendly with me. They're cool with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not in the inner, inner circle, but they're getting in the front door. And they know enough to take joy in what you're going through. And they had their fingers crossed for a long time. And when you tell them the gory details 
in the inner workings of your life. They're sitting there. I mean, it's it's almost it's almost a sexual vibe, and I don't mean sexual like sex, but it's an intense lust. For your downfall, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, tell me more. Yeah, serves you right. It's almost like a bout of masturbation. It's just, what is this, phone sex? And I'm not saying it's sex, but it's so intense, the satisfaction that they're getting from hearing that you have challenges in your life. I don't want to say problems. Like I said, problems is a heavy word. Problems like pro Saying you have problems is like having two, uh, 200, 200 pounds in a knapsack on your back. You don't want to move. You just want to lay down. I can't carry this. I got problems. So you just want to sit down on the curb and sit there. I ain't getting up. This thing is too heavy. I have challenges. Why? Because I'm a superstar. I'm a champion. I run after challenges. I surmount them. I didn't say I mount them because that would be sexual. <laughs> Man, I mount challenges. What am I doing with challenges? No, I surmount them. I overcome them. It, 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 it's, it sparks something in you when you say challenge. Challenge me and tell me I can't do it. Challenge me and put something in front of me that you think I can't get over. And I'm going to show you if you're one of them secondary associates in the inner outer circle. The jealous ones, you motivate me and I piss you off because you jealous and your jealousy motivates me more because I know you jealous. So I'm going to crush you with that negative spirit until you wake up and understand that the creator made you too. But I can't mess with you because you're wired in a way that's diametrically opposed to my progress. Because even though I had to get up early today and I realized from last night that my internet was out, you know, Thank the creator, I did three shows yesterday. And I'm not going to say, well, I did three yesterday. I usually do two, so I don't have to do one early. No, we're still going to do one with Miko right after this when I set it up. But I said, you know what? This ain't the morning no more. It ain't the morning. It's, it's, it's 12, 12, 39 on the West Coast right now. So it's nowhere near morning in America. It's 739 for me in West Africa. But all I'm saying is that you got to be careful of those. Because they're only there to watch you fall. And they're not ever going to give you anything to pick yourself up back up again. They will act kind. Let me tell you something. These secondary envious people, they will take you out to dinner more times than ever before. They will come and visit you more times than ever before when you're going through things because they got to get the scoop. And you turn around and think them, not knowing that they're really vampires and say, oh, thank you so much. You, you know, you're, you, you, you've been there for me. <laughs> and they look at you like, you damn fool. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me just put this out there. Alonzo Huggins, thanks for the contribution of your words. Let me see what you said. You, you just said, uh, yo, Lance, you're right about this shit. The fifth dimension reveals all this. And you should be glad in it for this day. That negative talk spirit talk that. No, no, for real. I understand what you're saying, bro. It's the truth. Like you say, once you mastered yourself, is the more you can see it immediately. Like I said, I can see it in someone's eyes. You know, face to face. You know? Wow, Reese. Oh, man. He says, oh, God, I should have heard this before I started my work shift today. And I'm telling you, when I was on my way to go and paying for my Internet for the next couple of whatever, because I burn the Internet, y'all. And y'all can get on Patreon for a dollar. Now, the Patreon, I want to say, and I'm not hustling right now. I'm just telling you because there's no other way other than Zelle, PayPal. I want to stay away from Cash App because it's weird. I, I, you know. You can do it land skirt live or whatever. And it's not a hustle. I'm just telling you, I'm not demanding anything out of you that way. People say, well, how can I contribute? I say, well, listen, just go to Patreon. Land skirt, a dollar, one dollar. That's all. Twelve dollars a year. That's to support what I do here and everywhere else. But what a lot of people get upset with me on Patreon is that, well, you ain't putting nothing on Patreon. Well, if it's something super exclusive, I will. But I usually don't. I used to try. But now it's just to support the overall Landscurve platform. One buck, y'all. <laughs> One dollar a month. 
You see what I mean? Because things are running down over here. This equipment, I'm a, like an old man on a fixed income. One dollar a month is good. Now, if you want to choose to give more, fine. But I'm not stressing anybody because these are rough times for a lot of people. And for those who give more, fine. I know who you are. There's some who are here. Thank you so much. But this is not a money grab for me. This is something I do out the heart. But when it comes time, like when I had to pay the internet and pay this and pay all these little programs and stuff, they add up. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm saying, you know what, I'm going to go do some overtime and get a little extra. I ain't nowhere near a bus right now. I ain't nowhere near a jail right now. The job's out here. Shoot, might as well stay home. <laughs> My little check, I'm cool. But anyway, um, I just want to say, uh, okay, uh, Naima, on what platform did you send it? It could have been uh, Landscurv Live on Cash App. That's the only official Cash App I used. We have others who have control of the Cash App before. I don't know what's going on with it. They're probably keeping what they give, but Landscurv Live is the only one. It's the only one. Yeah, Landscurve Live. Let me just put it here. And again, I ain't turned it into these other guys, but there's a lot of... um. There's a lot of deception out here in the world. That's what it is right there. But PayPal, Zelle, Zelle is the best because nothing comes out. It goes from your bank account to mine. But if you want to go on Patreon, $1, that's it. You pay $12, then don't do more, no more because whatever comes out of Patreon comes out every month. $1 is cool. That's to show you I'm not trying to gank you. But at least collectively, if there are a bunch of people that do that, some flow comes in on top of what I get from my retirement. And that really helps a whole lot because I got a lot of stuff going on. And there's another person out here saying, yeah, Lance got uh, all this money and he built a mansion out there and, and, and he living good. So don't give him nothing. I'm not saying you got to give me nothing. I'm just saying <laughs> it's a nice place, but it ain't finished yet. You know, so I got to go month by month now. Right. So people out here saying they gave us money to build this. This lot, Let me tell you something. It ties back into what I'm saying. Yeah. Definitely, I got it. I have somebody running it for me. And the reason why, and they send me everything, is because I believe it's just the UK in the United States that utilizes Cash App. And Cash App is a little shady sometimes. Try looking into how you can contact them if you have anything that goes wrong. Um, it's crazy. So that's cool. And I have somebody who sends me the stuff to my PayPal and I get it from here. I don't want to talk about money like that because it's not like I'm trying to like, like I see some people out here, man. It, ain't, it is about that, but it ain't about that. But it's not like I'm pressing nobody. I'm going to do this anyway. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, it, yes, Indigo King. Yes. And, and I've been, we've been ripped off a lot. If I got to get back in a, in, in a private conference call and give some details, let me know when y'all want to talk and I'll tell you some things. I mean, I, I, I got ripped off this morning. I put in 420 CDs to top off my internet. And when you do it, and I don't want to get too complicated into this, but I'm going to say it. I went and paid for it and I put it directly into my little internet module, which is about maybe, let me look at it here. Three inches by two inches by, by one third of an inch tall, small little thing. Right. And that's what I use for, you know, the shows and my connection. I'm way up in the mountains. It works very well. So they were telling me, you know, you know, because we have this thing called mobile money. I got to go explain this so you can understand. Mobile money is a way of transferring money to other people using your phone number here in Ghana, right? So if there's one guy who doesn't have a bank account, you way out in the country, another person did some yard work for you or built a wall for you, and y'all don't have a bank account, but you don't have no cash. Well, how do you do it? You put your cash and you keep your cash in your mobile money account. It's like a bank account. And through your phone number, like if I'm giving Indigo King some money and I say, I'm going to give you 500 CDs, all they're going to do is punch in there through a, a system of prompts, put your phone number, Indigo King, say I'm sending the $500, bing, it goes from my number to yours. This is what happened, right? Um, on my internet module, it has its own phone number. Right. But it has a SIM card in there. Now, instead of sending from my mobile money account directly into that, when I went to the place, which is not too far where they deal with this, I said, here, take this cash and put it straight on to my Internet module. Don't don't give it to me on my phone with the phone number. And then I got to transfer it again. I have it right here. Take the cash and put it directly in there. Now, 
Here's the catch. That internet module has a phone number. It can't ring, but it needs a number to be able to receive it to that SIM card. Good. I sent the money to the number of that uh, 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 mobile device. I'm sitting there trying to get online now because it comes on automatically. And it wouldn't work. So I told the young lady, I said, listen, we just paid. I'm, I saw you. You put it in. And I wasn't an accuser, but I said, this thing is not coming online now. I don't have my internet. So she looked at it. She tried. I stood, I was there for 20 minutes. I can't come home without my internet. I got to do work. I got to do these shows. So I said, wait a second. Do me a favor. Open up to the inside of this internet module. Take out the SIM card and see the number that it's related to. Oh, that's related to it. So she did that. And the number that was actually in the internet uh, uh, mobile unit was a different number. Because when I went to another place, when I was having difficulty, they switched the SIM cards. So the 420 CDs that I sent to the number I thought was a number it went to the SIM card of mine that was stolen. So somebody out there got 420 CDs. Slick, 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 slick. I was so mad. But really at a, an exchange rate, I say one for 10, one dollar for 10. It was only about $42. But who wants to lose that? Right? That was one for 11 point whatever. It fluctuates. I was mad. I was so mad. So you know what I did? I, said, I was going to go home. You know, I like to freshen up and shave and I I'm weird that way. You can see me where you don't see no hair in my face, but I got to, I got to be like ready. I don't know. That's just something in my mind. I got to be washed, scrubbed, shaved, shave my head, all that stuff. Like you see on the banner. Now I don't look any different than that. If I miss a day of shaving, but I got up early to get the internet on because we use the internet with our WhatsApp, WhatsApp calls, the local calls is a different fee. We don't do too much of the local stuff because we don't know as many people here, right? So I wasn't coming home. I was like, nah, but I felt messed up because I just threw on these old dusty looking Crocs. You know what I mean? I feel I felt oily, but I wasn't because I'm clean. I'm still clean. I washed up real good before I went to sleep, but I like to come out scrubbed and go out to the world and do my business. I don't know. So I was so mad. I said, let me just go straight down there. So I take the van all the way down from the mountains through Accra, all the way down to Accra Mall. I'm looking down at my feet. The Crocs are all dusty. Little kids go, mommy, his feet look funny. I um, had to endure all of that. I paid. I got everything on, but this is where I discovered what went wrong? You have to be very careful. They got all kind of, I mean, I call them micro scams, things you can't even think about. You think you're just like the young lady last night who was basically abducted. My friend Marta, and she talked about it. And she's strong for this just to have happened. But there's all, and you know, there's a lot of, you know, I'm here and, and I'm not ragging the place, but you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out when you come here because you're a big target. And there's also an element of jealousy, which helps them to fuel this. They can come out to church praising the Lord, full of good feeling for everybody, and see you and be like, hmm, you from America. I know how sweet America is. You can afford it. They go and they own a store, and they go charge you three times the amount just because of where you're from, and you must have a million dollars. So there's a lot that I can talk about, and there's a lot that I will talk about, but I will kind of avoid the politics here in this country because. They snuff journalists. And I'm not a journalist, but I stick out. And if I start talking some things, eh, like I said, I don't know where to run. I'll be like that old roach in a new kitchen. Old roach come from next door and say, hey, there's other roaches over here. New civilizations, new horizons. Wow. Better crumbs under the refrigerator. And the lights come on. Everybody else scurry back to where they know they're going. I'm sitting there. I'm the one that gets smashed on the floor. And, eh, eh, it ain't going to happen. But there's dirty stuff all over the world, y'all. So for me, I say how it's not. It's beautiful. But there's a lot of people here who may not be what they claim to be. And there's that jealousy and that envy, too. Not everybody, but it's there. But like I was saying before, you have these people who stick by your side because they're waiting for the payoff of your downfall. 
It could be your job. It could be your in-laws. It could be your family. It could be your, even your very mate. You know what I mean? Like, like That's a whole other topic. It could be male or female. I want to do a show about men who despise their women. Not their women like a black man who doesn't like black women. No. A man who is married or dating a woman and he despises her secretly. Like, how, why would you want to be in a relationship with somebody you despise? And you have some women who are like that too. It's a weirdo kind of jealousy with them. I couldn't, I wouldn't even know how to categorize it, but I've seen it. I've seen it play out. Women who are secretly upset with the success of their men that they enjoy also. They enjoy the fruits of that man's success, but they, they despise him and they're envious of him because he is successful. What the hell? Should you want to be, and I'm not saying this in a submissive way, that helpmate? Make sure everything is going smooth so he can be more successful so you can enjoy more? And it's not that you're with him to enjoy what he earns, but it's a system. It's a total system. And there's, there's so many, I, I'm going to say this, that, you know, when my mother went back to school, because, you know, she graduated graduated from Juilliard School of Music and did other things to get her degrees and stuff like that. But when she went back in the early 70s and she wanted to do the nursing thing and she had to go back. And, you know, when you go to school sometime, you have those remedial courses and you have those other things that may not have everything to do with what you're doing. So she had to take this uh, psychology course. Right. And um, I remember looking at the book so fascinated how the mind worked. But I can tell you right now. And anybody who has dealt in, with the public or, or people who are in law enforcement, who the good people in law enforcement, because you got some wackos there too, but the good people, they will tell you that there's like subcategories of subcategories now, newly morphed psychological issues that people have because of this modern day society and how swift things are coming at their brain. Things are not as simple as they used to be. Back in the day, it's more complicated. And those of us who are older, it doesn't mean we're old, but we got here before the younger generations. Sometimes we can't even conceptualize or even understand or begin to understand how weird all these individuals are. And I'm not just throwing off on the youngsters. Some of the older people are weird too. And I'm not going to talk about somebody bad because they transitioned. But someone re recently transitioned that I knew as a passenger on my bus. I'm not talking bad about it. It is what it is. I'm just stating facts. I'm speaking the experience. If I'm a rotten guy and I transition, go to the funeral and say, hey, Lance was a rotten guy. I'll give you a thumbs up. I'll pull the casket up and give you a thumbs up. Everybody will fly out. Of there. Oh, my God. He's not dead. Oh, hoo -hoo. You see? But this woman, I'm not even going to call her name. Those who know me well, like in Orlando, in the small, you know, even my good friends may not know the name of this person, right? But this woman, when I first started, I had a bus route, which I pretty much did all of my career there. And she lived in this particular apartment. It was kind of, yeah, it was the hood. Everybody knew her. Hood ain't always bad. You know, you have the older woman who is respected and even the guys who are selling drugs or doing things, they'll help her home. You know, don't kick in her door and try to rip off her money. You know, go somewhere else and do that. Now, I'm not condoning that ideology. I'm just saying we know that's how it is. This is my hood, man. You know, that old lady ain't bother you, man. You better step off with that. Get to stepping. So anyway, she would, she had a bad foot. She worked in the hospital. She worked two jobs. One in one hospital, one in the other. Not too hard to guess what hospital in Orlando because there ain't that much hospitals in Orlando, right? So I made sure to treat her nice. Now, she was like 20 years my senior. She might have been, I think, I think it was about maybe 12 years or something like that. But she was lying and she was trying to make it seem like she was close to my age, which that's her business. Women do that. You know what I mean? You know, they have their own little idiosyncrasies. I ain't not, at this point in my life, I'm not knocking those things, right? But she would not get off on the outbound, on the outbound trip from downtown. Where her stop was, 
was just across a short street. Just a short street. But she would ride all the way around, all through uh, 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 Washington Shores, all through Richmond Heights. It was a round robin kind of situation. It was a short route. It went a little distance, but it was short time-wise. And then when I came back to Washington Shores heading inbound, I could not leave until a certain time. So she would sit there with me. So when I got back to the stop, it was on the other side of the street. And sometimes when it was really late, because she would time it and make sure that on my last run, which was that run, and my days off, she would always ride with me. So her foot's hurting. It might be raining. Maybe one or two people on the bus. I park the bus right there, open the door, and I take her groceries, a short half, it was a short, I can't even say half a block. I'd carry her bags to her door. And she was so thankful. She'd hug, thank you, thank you so much. And I'd be on my way. There are a lot of people that I did that for. And they didn't just have to be old. They could have been pregnant. They could have been, no, I just need help. It could have been dudes, man. I slipped my back out, man. I'm a mechanic, man. You help me with this. Yeah, I got you. Or I'd get some young fellas. Sometimes it wasn't even always me. Hey, help them out. That's what we did. That's how I ran my bus, right? So it wasn't no hanky-panky stuff going on. Until, <laughs> until some of the other bus drivers were like, yo, Lance, what's going on with you and uh, so-and-so? That's what you mean. I mean you know, and, and, and homegirl was decent around me, but she was straight gangster and straight hood around everybody else. You know what I mean? Yes, thank you. Thank you, knowing one. Yes, thank you. You know, I'm on a little comedic whatever right now. I'm going to wrap it down soon because Sister Miko's going to come on after this. And it's not going to be immediate because I still have to create the link. So it ain't going to take long to do that. I just call and say, hey, boom, make the thing, make the banner, pop, pop, pop. I'm getting better at this. So anyway, they're like, yo, you, 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 you dealing with that lady? That's what you mean dealing. Dealing like what? Dealing cards? I don't play cards with that lady. I was being funny. I said, no, seriously, what are you, what are you, what are you trying to, you know, say? Well, you know, she's going up and down, man. She got a crush on you. She said, man, she said, you blew her back out there. And I said, come on, man, you must be lying. You get out of here. You know what I mean? What? Her? Come on. I'm not going to knock nobody on their looks. Angle, but she did look way older than me. And it was like, how could she say that? I never alluded to anything that way. I was a complete professional. Come on now. Yeah. And she said, yeah, you hooked. And she put it on you. Oh, oh my God. What? And so it ended up being where... I never confronted her on those words because there are many bus drivers that said that. And I didn't know that she had a fetish for bald headed bus drivers from up north. There's a lot of them that moved down from up north that didn't drive a bus. I never drove a bus in New York City, but I drove one down. I was never in corrections in New York City, but I was down in um, Orlando, right? So I didn't know how to handle it. It was embarrassing. Because now passengers are saying things. Be careful with that lady. You know, she's a little crazy. But you're saying, you must be to say these things and they're not true. And I treated you so nice. And even on days that I would do overtime, she'd find out what other routes I was doing and end up there if she was off. How you doing, baby? Oh, God. How do I, people chuckling? I'm like, oh, man, no, no, no. So I confronted her in a very indirect, and it wasn't even confronting. I'm just in a very indirect way. I just let her know that when I come out here to drive this bus, I come out here to do my job the best that I can. If I can be friendly with people, if we can, you know, be edifying to each other's day and add something on, fine. I don't mind that. But never would I lie about my dealings with somebody and spread. See, I didn't say it was her. I use a reverse psychology and she caught on to it. But she was mad with me. So I saw her a couple of days later. I greeted her the same way. And she sucked her teeth and kept going. Oh, well, you started it. You know what I mean? So, oh, that, oh, oh well, let it be what it be. So um, she really was disgruntled. And she was saying, oh, let me just share what knowing when to say here in the chat room. He says, you're welcome. I attended a family wedding this past weekend. Jealousy is real. Some family members shared the worst pictures of me. Not vain, but I see the difference. My face and body look horrific. Well, you know what? Whatever your look was in comparison to now, what your look was in comparison to then, it's what's on the inside that really counts. And we go through different periods in our life where sometimes we sacrifice 
put more hours in on the job, maybe go through things. Our body weight will fluctuate. Sometimes we look real tired, dark circles under the eyes, face bloated, gut bloated. Other times we get a handle on it. You know, things pass by. We're stronger. So we're going to have different looks. Look, when I look at some of my pictures, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> you know what I mean? From the past. And sometimes I'm lean and chiseled. Sometimes I look at videos of myself and I'm like, man, my head looked like a basketball. My weight fluctuates between it can change in the look. I can be bloated more depending on how I look to hell with these people who choose the worst. That means they see the best in you and don't want the world to see it. That's what it is. They see the best in you and don't want the world to see it. So they're going to try their best to try to embarrass you, whatever. I'll joke about it. I remember when George Foreman was coming back and he was boxing and he was much heavier than what he was. He still had a lot of muscle on him, but people couldn't see it because he had a little belly. He was bloated. He was bald headed now, whatever. So he's like, if I can't knock out the fighter that I'm fighting, I'm going to belly bump him. And that way I can, you know what I mean? He made fun of it. That's what I do. That's what I do. Not because I'm trying to like poke fun of myself to beat people to that, but it really doesn't bother me because again, you must know knowing one that you're a champion. If you made it through this life to this point with all the, and it goes for everybody in this chat room. We all made it through a whole lot of crap that other people gave up on and, and, and did terrible things, took their life overdose, gave up, started drugs whatever. And we got through it enough to be, have enough sanity at this point that even if we still have the scars of certain parts of our life, I don't have a six pack right now. I used to have a wickedly wicked cobblestone stomach. I look for it every day. I know it's under there. I know when the time comes for me to focus on that, but that is not just me. There's so much more to me than meets the eye. I'll take this version over the other version. No, I ain't gonna lie. I would like to have that body back. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though? We, we get to know ourselves better as we get older. So how are you going to try to come at me with some old, old foolishness of some pictures from a different period of my life? Right now, knowing one, this is the best version of you that there ever is. Forget about, I'm not saying forget about the flesh, but you know there's more to it because this flesh goes back to the earth. What have you chiseled out? What have you... Uh, 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 improved? What have you gotten rid of, of the old ways? And what about them who did that to you? If they got time to do that to you, being envious and, and trying to kill your shine, then what is it that they're trying to hide? What if their secrets were exposed or pictures exposed? Oh God, I got a lot of pictures out there. I don't, I don't want nobody to see them. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> I get some anonymous pictures sent to me from when I was extra wild back in the day. Boy, what? And at times I wasn't in shape. Sometimes I was chubby. I put on weight. I get fat quick like Mike Tyson. I, he puts on weight quick. You see him one interview, two weeks is big. And the next one he's small. I'm the same way. When I get less sleep, I bloat. When I eat more sugar in my diet, I get more bloat. I get, so what? You are you. You have impressed upon people confident, good things, positive things. What kind of aftertaste do people have in their mouth after you're around them? Right? This person here, look what, look what they're working on. So the best thing to do is continue shining. They evidently have a problem with the good stuff that's inside of you. Continue to shine and piss them off. These jealous people motivate me. I don't focus on them. But when the thought comes up and they put themselves in your way, shine for them and smile at their face. See, I have reasons to shine more so today, the little, little encounter today, whatever. I said, okay, I'm going to shine when I get inside. Yeah. You little non I'm not saying this to you knowing what I'm just saying to this entity, you little nondescript. And I'm not saying this in a condescending way, but when you're positive, you have legal right to call out these inferior-minded demons. And why do I say inferior-minded? Because... They caught up in the seven deadly sins and more. See, when they say that you can conjugate words, well, you can conjugate sins. It ain't just lust. It ain't just greed. It ain't just slothfulness. It ain't just envy. What happens when you're slothful and envious at the same time? Now you got a whole new, what's the word we use now in the age of the mask and the jab? 
variant <laughs> in this spiritual pandemic. Some got three and four. Some come up with whole new combinations. The seven deadly sin combo. Some people got that walking around with it. Like this woman who didn't like the fact that I straightened her out in an eloquent way that she can't say I said something bad to her because I was on the bus and every word and every visual from seven different cameras on the inside is digitally recorded. So you know what this woman did? <laughs> yes, no one won. Always, always. Much love, always. But you know what this woman did? And let me tell you the miracle in this. And I'm going to say the God word, right? We can't say that no more. Meaning the sum total of all positive things, good things, the creative universe, all this stuff. Not the little European, little picture, the, the little brunette or blonde on the, on the wall. We ain't talking about that little watered down thing. I'm talking about the almighty. I'm talking about the, the creator of, of everything. This is, not, this is not religious talk. This is spiritual talk, right? This woman who just recently passed away, she didn't like the fact that I would not hold up my bus that left at 1015, scheduled to leave at 1015 at night. And her bus wasn't due to come in that she was on already at 1035. How do I wait and hold up the people who are eager to go to work because that bus route went to Universal Studios and I had to drop off people in different areas at certain times so they can catch shuttles to different areas of Universal Studio or walk in it on time. The only time you can hold up a bus in Orlando, Florida, it, the Lynx Bus Company, that's who I drove for, is when it's the absolute last bus. So the absolute last bus on my route left at 12.35 in the morning. So if a person was coming and say, listen, it's the last bus. Could you tell the bus driver? Because they call from bus to bus. I could do that. I can receive a call. Then it's acceptable. Not always, but sometimes and often. So she was mad at that. So here, listen to this, y'all. This is worse. And this is perfect to bring up for this, for this um, topic. This is a real story. Yo, 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 I got stories for days. <laughs> for days, I got stories for years. So anyway. She was working at the hospital. And she was even lying about her position. She was saying she was, a, what, what is it, um, RN? Is it the RN, the, the, the top nurse? I'm not knocking a woman for what she did, but she was always bragging about how she cleared six figures between the two jobs, and she's a nurse here and a nurse there, and whatever, on the bus. That was her life, the bus. I didn't say a name. I'm not ragging her because she died, but that's, this, what, this is my story, right? So, she took a break and walked away as she could, which was you know legal to do for the hour or the 30 minutes. And she went to the staircase. You know, you had these big hospitals, you know, a lot of crazy kinky things going in there at nighttime or weird stuff going on. She went to the staircase way on the other side that hardly anybody uses. As if you find yourself over there and you think, let me just jump down this one floor. So she nestled herself between these two floors and you can hear the door open for somebody coming in there. So she was, I think it was like 11 o'clock in the morning. Now for me, I used to finish at that time, the last, when I would bring it into the yard and drop off the last people in the inbound, that particular, and I think it was like almost two o'clock in the morning. That's when I used to come home and do those late live streams, right? So I was sleeping. Now, Another friend of mine, because this woman wasn't a friend no more, but a very close friend of mine who's been on the show very few times, but you'll remember if I bring her up, I'm going to put a name in it. She rang the phone. She called me. She was like one of my informants. <laughs> she's like, Lance. And she's real with hers now, but she gave me the heads up. She's like, Lance, I can't believe what blankety blank said. I was on the other side of the hospital away from my regular station, but I happened to be there. I had a two hour break. I was legal to have this two hour break to balance out the time. You know how to make you take more of a break or take time off. So I spent it by the station and I was heading back. I need the exercise. So I walked all the way down there 
and opened the door slow. So I leaned on the door, opened it up, and I hear Blankety Blank's voice. Now, Miss Blankety Blank, who just passed away, was not friends with my friend. She was a long time ago, but they became enemies. And this woman who passed away, she couldn't remain friends with you too long. All right? That's just how she was. So my friend heard her. This could not have been random. Heard her in the stairwell calling my job. Calling my job. She caught the conversation from early on. Because this lady was evidently on hold. So she heard her voice and she came right in on the time when she started the call to my job. Why was this woman calling my job? Here's how the phone call went. Once it was transferred, it was loud because she had it on speaker. Hello, Lynx, transportation company. Uh, yes, um, I, I, I'm a passenger on the 21 bus route and I'd like to report one of your drivers. Okay, what's the nature of the report? What's the nature of the, it's a complaint, right? Yes, it is. And he's been doing this for a very long time. Really? Well, what is it that you feel he's in, in violation of? Well, number one, you know, we have our fare card that we can swipe. And you also can put money inside the fare box. And the person's like, yes, correct. Well, 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 I see him tell the people not to put the money in the fare box. And he says there's something wrong where it's jamming it up. Give it to him. And he takes the money and puts it to the side in a little bag. And he keeps that money for himself. This lady was accusing me of stealing. I don't steal nothing. I don't care what it is. No. I'm not done yet. He gets in that, that bus and he drives that thing so reckless, almost getting into accidents. People over the last few months falling on the floor when he's driving. He's begging them not to report him, but I'm going to do it because he's a danger to the company and he's going to be a liability. I know he's been driving here many, many years, but I lived here many, many years and drove on the bus longer than he'd been here. That lady was trying to get me straight fired. Because at the root of it, it was a jealousy that came out of rejection. And she saw how I got along with everyone on the bus, and she hated it. Let me tell you something. When I used to do the 9 15, 21 route on the outbound, that was the talk show. Nothing beat that. If I had somebody who could record the interactions between the passengers, that made, forget the weekend, that made their day. They didn't need a weekend after that. We were telling jokes. You know, I was, at the, I was at the helm of it. You know, all the people who were in it like that, they all pretty much worked at Universal. They all filtered to the front. I asked, what are we going to talk about tonight? Oh, I got a joke for you. And you know, I'm making all, we had our inside jokes. We, people, they couldn't even drink like a Coca-Cola or orange juice out of a straw. They drink it, they spitting it up. Golden times, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I got to find somebody, some way, somehow from those days, I have one number of a gentleman, I think he just had a stroke. I hope he's still with us. And there's some other people that have just scattered about and just, we've lost contact. But if that could be something recorded, that would be the show of all shows. As strangers came in and we were talking and people would go to the back, hey man, y'all having fun, I need to come up here. So the it, it was like the whole bus after a while. Was it, what? Those were some good, good times. And she would see that. The times that she made it on my, my bus and she despised it because she was trying to spread the rumor that me and her were dealing. And she had done that to other people too, I found out. But she went and called my job. So what I did after my friend told me that, I wasn't to drive until later on that afternoon, but I got up immediately. I put on my uniform because I was going to stay down there. So I was going to stay downtown until my bus came to work that day. But I went there and I located the person upstairs. There were three people who take calls. But before that, let me just add in the best part of the story because I went down. I called immediately. I know the three girls that would take complaints. We couldn't coerce them or whatever. After I got that news, I called immediately. I said, listen, you just got a phone call about me, Lance Skirvin. You just got a phone call. I'm stealing money. I'm driving reckless. 
oh, wow, uh, I just got to And I was lucky because I could have one of the other two. I would have to tell them to pass it around like a joint until I get the right one. But off the bat, I got the right one. I said, listen, you can go forward with your complaint, but I'm coming down here to speak to some of the supervisors. And that night, we're going to deal with that. See? Because I told him, I said, I do not feel comfortable with this woman, you know, riding with me. So she called and the bus was close enough and the supervisor said, okay, wait for that bus, just as a courtesy. Because he knew that she was a complainer. Everybody knew it. So she came there and the supervisor was waiting for her. What problem do you have with this driver? You know, and, and I couldn't say the part that I knew about, right? But she was surprised that they dealt with the complaint and I did know about it, but she couldn't know how I knew about it. She was messed up. And they told her, listen, if you're going to accuse them of something that's not true, because what happened was they went to the bus before I got a hold of it, the one that I usually drive because it would assign a bus unless it was repaired or something, had a nice bus. And they pulled the digital recording and they saw that over days, they looked into it and it was nothing, nothing that I did wrong. Now they stepped to her that night. So could you imagine how she felt? And I'm standing there. Now, when I saw, I was pissed. <laughs> I wanted to say something so bad, like touche. She made the call that morning and I whispered a little bit. I did have to let her know, you know, be careful when you call on people on your job. She thought I was into some kind of, I think he's in the photo. I think he's in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like this is jealousy, y'all. And I never had to deal with her again. Except when she would walk, she would get on my bus sometime, but she'd mumble stuff under her breath, like just so hateful. Always bringing gossip about people, always hateful towards somebody. But she would fool you when she met you at first. You say, oh no, this is such a sweet woman until she burns you. So I had to deal with that. She just recently passed away. And the thing that I said to my friend, the very friend that told me when she made that call, she called, she was the one that called me to tell her, to tell me that she passed away. And I said, you know what? If you can't say nothing good about a person, don't say nothing at all, but you know what it is because you know what I went through with her. And even she had to go through a lot with her because me and her were cool and homegirl that just passed away was saying me and her was screwing. I was screwing everybody according to that lady because I wasn't screwing her. You know what I mean? And they saw me on social media. They saw these different things and she didn't like it. Am I screwing everybody? I interview, am I screwing everybody that, I, you know, people are still saying, that, yeah, he, he comes to America. He, I ain't been to America since what? Last time I was there, September 15th, 2020. They got to like, my penis is so long. If you go in space, the spaceship, and look at Earth, it look like a lollipop because it's hanging so much. I can screw somebody there tonight. Let me aim my penis toward Georgia. There's a lot of good women over there. Oh, no, no, let me aim it over there to California. Let me, come on, get off of it. These people that, you know, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there are some people that are miserable. And you have the right to tell your story when you deal with miserable people. Sometimes you no, I don't really want to say, you know, let it go. I'm not saying dom make it dominate your mind, but this is what it is. And too many of us are so sheepish. And no, no, no. They can do, say dirt about you and you can't reveal it. You see what I mean? So we, we, I'm not saying you knowing one. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying like when, when appropriate, you stand tall in who you are and don't let these je jealous ent entities ruin your day and mar your day. And bring you down. Most, most of the time, like I said, I just shine more. Look them in the eye. <laughs> but I don't have to. Those are the biggest fans. Those are the ones who come up on these pages and online and watch and listen and peep. And what's he doing now? And uh, well, how, You know, there are people who are literally pissed that I moved out to the motherland. Yes, it's a good place. Yes, there's a lot of jealousy out here. And there's a lot of scams out here. But you got to look at everything overall. There are miserable people still whispering and making phone calls and DMs and stuff like that. Like I said, you know what really clean house for me? I have a friend out in Dubai, between Pakistan and Dubai. He's an internet genius. And he's like, Lance, everybody around you is not real. I said, I know that. I have a feeling on a lot of things for a long time, but I don't, you know, when you see the snake in the grass, you don't always jump. You study the snake, the movements, what's going on. You got your eye on it. Ain't nothing going to happen to you because you got your eye on it. 
when he said, listen, I'm not going to try to start nothing up. But you need to see this. I said, what? He, he's not a, I hate to say the word hacker. He's above that, but he has, he can blow any hacker out. He said, listen, stop wasting time with these people. Here's what they're saying about you. Here, I, look, here's an email. Here's a, what? Well, why'd you do that, man? No, 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 no. You need to see, because you trust these people too much. When I saw what I wasn't supposed to see, because I did not tell him to do that. I was like, this is what I'm dealing with. And I put out an announcement. I said, listen, I have to clean house a little bit and deal with everybody one by one because this is the situation. I didn't put out what I saw and what I had and still have. Man, some of them people, I ain't hear from them yet. <laughs> they gone because they knew. It shouldn't have to be that way. And I would never order that because my spirit tells me what others have to hack into and get. Sometimes it may fool me for a while, but it is what it is. But, you know, this can be a matter of life and death with jealous people around you. You know, we have gossip. People say things. They're going to bring th things to you. They're going to take from you and bring to them. This is what those lower energy beings do. But it, the epitome of that, they basically want you dead. It starts out low. And it festers up unless they take care of it. And they basically want you wiped off the face of the earth because your shine cripples what they are not doing. But your shine is not stopping them. Take the time and look within to who you really are. Take the time to look within the dysfunctions that you may have been born into and you may have inherited this, these dysfunctions and adopted them. Now you're raising up a new generation of dysfunctions that you didn't cause. Sometimes you have to take a few years off from the dating scene and from all the social stuff and be still and look within and say, let me untangle this mess that I inherited. You can't blame family after so many years because now you have it. I'm not saying you know when anybody here, but now it's yours. What are you going to do with it? It's like inheriting a house that's full of junk. You inherited a house from an older aunt that was a straight up pack rat. Okay. You don't like the way she lived. You would never live like this, but she was a pack rat. But you inherited this house. So five years from now, when I come to visit you and you say how you hated her being a pack rat, you inherited the house and it's packed up even more. That's not her fault. You inherited this dysfunction, this home in this state. And I'm just saying five years. It, look, if I inherited a home and it was a pack rat, five days, the house is clear. <laughs> It might not be repainted and remodeled, but the old junk is going out. We inherit things. And lots of times we have a bloodline of jealous people or there's some people in your family that may influence you to think this way. Why are you this way? This is why I thank the creator for wiring me a certain way. They should have wired me in a way to say, well, Lance, you know, too many girlfriends ain't too good. And the reason why is because they never said that it was. But I have an older brother, 11 years older than me, that is heavily into drugs. And that's why I ran the other way to get into bodybuilding. When I think back at it, I didn't say, well, he's on drugs and I'm going to know. I wanted my parents to be proud of how I kept myself, not realizing that it's not the woman's fault. But you run away so hard from one thing and you're like, man, that became my drug. See? So it's like a pendulum swinging from one to the other. So we have to really look within ourselves and really, really take stock. And I'm just glad that knowing when you understand what it is and don't let anybody blow your shine because anything they try to embarrass you on, you can improve. It's not that you are this and you are that. It's the person on the inside. Everybody goes over the double yellow line sometimes when they're driving on that two-lane road. Sometimes you got to go around things and then going around maybe the uh, 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 transition of a loved one, like I said before, loss of a job or, you know, sometimes you're a little stressed from pushing so hard or you fall behind your bills. We may look a certain way and, you know, find ourselves at a function and, and people start talking. You know what I mean? I can show my face on the, on, on, I can pull, I can click a button and remove the banner and show my face. 
But I said, these days, I want to really focus on what I'm trying to say and really unearth what I know instead of worrying about how I look. I'll go in the backyard and pull the camera up sometime and show my face. Hey, I don't, I don't have an eye in the middle of my head. I don't have fangs. I didn't put on 400 pounds. Y'all see me a couple, but last week or so, I made a video like that. Why he hiding? You know, he, just, he coming up with some, I saw, I saw a picture of him, man. He had two black eyes. Somebody beat his ass. Like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I get it because I've been on YouTube a long time. I've been online a long time with no major apparent drama. Oh, there has been drama that was unrelated to social media. Long before I was on YouTube, I can kind of halfway tell you some stories about that. People coming at you online and all this stuff. You know, somebody that was close to me at one time came at me so hard online, on Instagram. I mean, they, they had people calling me up. Yo, Lance, man, you need to check your Instagram, homegirl. It's going off on you. And I was like, oh, you, are you serious? The things they said, okay. I know in boxing, when you throw a jab, you open for a right to the body. Or I can come with a right over your jab. And get you. When you throw a punch at somebody, you're vulnerable for something. It was so bad, though. They wrote paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs, and usually I'm reserved. But this wasn't acceptable. So what did I do? I wrote books. I wrote it and told it the real way from the gory beginning to the end, what I did, what I didn't do, where I licked, where I sucked, what I did. Yes. Yes. So Miss Holier Than Thou at that time could not believe I revealed the things that I did. It was classic. They were so embarrassed. They wouldn't even go to the church they went to no more. They were so embarrassed. They sold their home and moved to another state. I'm not proud of that. But you don't come for somebody like that because your feelings are hurt that way when you could have talked directly to somebody. See, there are people who remember and I'm going to talk about that particular time period in a coded way because I'm not trying to bring pain to those person, the person even still. But you got to be careful because, see, I'm open. Don't, don't, don't try to air out no dirty law. I'll air it out better and I'll tell you more. I'm waiting for the pictures to come out. <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> didn't the picture look good? <laughs> I was doing it. Maybe I can do it better now. You don't shame me with that because I'm, I'm, I'm you're transparent. It's like you have immunity. Like when you do a crime and the judge says, listen, tell us everything now. You know, don't come with nothing later on. That's what happened to the dude that they talk about with uh, Tupac. He thought he had immunity for certain things and he didn't. Well, there's nothing I haven't revealed on these uh, YouTube pages or landscurve.com, whatever. So if you want to bring it, bring it. I'll, I'll admit to it and say what, what it was. But listen. Just like I heard the other day on an Instagram meme. I forgot where I heard it from. I think I saved it somewhere. If I can play it again, I'm, it's too long to go dig for it now. But this is the thing. And remember this. If, if I am the monster, if I'm the bad guy, please don't forget to tell the prior chapters in what made me the way I am today. So if you want to run around and say, for me, like Lance is this, Lance is that. Please include the other parts that made me that way. The other chapters in that book, you spoke about me, me in that particular chapter eight. Well, tell them about the other seven chapters which made me act this way towards you. But most of us forget that. See what I mean? I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm going to just look at this one more time. They added weight on me and changed my eyes. No lie, Mr. Lance. They manipulated mine and a few of us and got theirs to be better. Seriously. However, I hear what you're saying. Wow. They took it as far as Photoshopping or whatever it is, whatever graphic program they had. That's jacked up. Hey, listen, I'm, in, I'm on your side. Y'all ever take pictures again? You send them to me. I'll do the same. I'll jack them up. <laughs> That's just, you know, but you know what it is, though. Not to make it about the pictures, but just speaking of jealousy and some people. Yes, you're rising. I'm very happy for you. You're doing on people. Right. Thank you. I'm humble about that. At least, like I said, it's not about the fame grab, the money grab. This is, I lived this. I couldn't wait to get home and just talk for a little while. I can't wait to set up this uh, live show with Miko and let her talk. 
and I feel satisfied at that. I may take a nap, take a shower, come back again, do another short one. If Marta calls me again and wants to talk about something else, I'll do it. Whoever else, this is what I do. This is what you'll talk about about me when it's my time to go. As opposed to my, I can't even say friend, but that lady who tried to get me fired, spread rumors, hated on me, made up all these different stories, and all I did was treat her nice. You see what I mean? So let it be this. Let it be the good things. Let it be the things that I may have affected you in a good way. Even if you forget my name one day. There was this guy, I can't remember his name, but he, man, he, always said, he was a funny guy, though, but he said some good things. If that's all it is, let it be that. Because we're all going to get up on out of here one day. And if I can correct some of the things and bad decisions I may have made or, you know, maybe feelings I hurt or toes I stepped on, or, you know, I stepped on some toes on purpose. <laughs> I'm not backing up off of that. But the bottom line is we want to correct those things and be a better version of ourselves leaving out of here than what we were coming in. And when we came in, we were a clean slate. But it's a lot of stuff that we had to absorb and a lot of things we uh, uh, inherited. And so we had to untangle that ball of yarn that we were to be something where we straightened ourselves out. You know, we've inherited dysfunctions. We've, we've inherited, and if we can overcome those things and surmount those things, that makes you the champion that you are. That being said, I'm going to give a call to Miko. I'm going to wrap this down. And I just want to say this, this was from the heart. There's no script or anything. It's just what it is. Tomorrow when I wake up, create a willing, I'll come with something else and it will be out a lot earlier. This is late for me for, this is not the morning, y'all. But I call it the morning show because it's my first show. Because usually if I do something at 11 o'clock, it comes out 7. There's no time set. I just wake up, freshen up, get something to eat, and just talk with what is downloaded to me from the soul. That's all. Current events, maybe. Hey, like Dr. Umar thing when they were with the white girl and, and uh, the black girl and the white guy. And she was talking about Dr. Umar. You know, things come. I didn't know. I didn't even know that was in existence. I saw that couple before, but when I saw that one, I was like, oh, I got to talk about this. Didn't have a script. Didn't know what I was going to say. Shoot from the hip, as always, unless I have something to read or to bring a guest on or something like that. Know what I mean? So, whoo. It is what it is. Thank you so much. Let me um, ease on another here. We will be back probably within the hour. Of course, it'll be within the hour unless she has something to do that um, took her away from, you know, because she's waiting for me. I'm going to do that one right. So we'll be back. Sister Miko, uh, what, Kunja Woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying, I said Kunja Queen, but Kunja Woman. Yeah, we'll be back. So anyway, knowing one, everyone else that's here, um, let me go up the list. Alonzo Higgins, uh, Huggins, I'm sorry. Uh, Reese, Naima Ra, thank you so much. Master Glam, as always, thank you for the recipe. <laughs> right, Willie C. Holman Jr., the distinguished. That's that's a money name. <laughs> that's a power name, right? Judge Willie C. Holman Jr., <laughs> uh, right? Knowing one, I said knowing one already. Let me see who else who. Billy Ray Valentine, yes, indeed. Okay. Indigo King, one one as always. Tyrone Bates, Libra, yes, that slipped me. Abu Leah Faletti, yes. Okay, I think that's it. There's always somebody that comes in early. I had not in Sons. Yes, Jack Griffin. Man, I forgot I talked about Jack Griffin. <laughs> I'm always talking about him so much, right? That's what it is. Steve Brown. Um, if I missed anybody, Judith Douglas Bay, how are you? I always see you in the comment section. It's good to see you on a live. I'll be doing more lives. Malisha Hare or Hare, Hare, whatever. Um, Malisha, thank you so much. And um, that wraps it up right now. I'll be back on with Mika, but she's going to be, be the one doing most of the talking. And if I feel up to it, you know, I'm feeling like putting in that extra work, like getting those extra credit, do this report for extra credit on your final mark. I was always wanting to do that because I was always insecure, but I always got good marks, right? But anyway, I paid attention in class. Much love to you all. Thank you so much. Lance Skurf signing off right now. I'm going to get another bite to eat. I'm struggling with going in the refrigerator and getting Mrs. Skurf's little juice there, but I won't do it as I promised. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to take a sip. I'm going to add a little more water to make up so it's still at the same line. You know that old trick back in the day. Anyway, take care. I'll see you in a little while. Much love. Thanks for coming. <laughs>